Demoing a one-piece tub surround doesn't have to be hard. In fact, it can be easy. The best thing you can do is remove the shower head, move on to remove your rough and valve and your tub spout, and then the overflow if you've got a tub. This little tool makes it so much easier to remove the drain from a tub. And then what you can do if you're going to be keeping the ceiling, the drywall ceiling, is score the drywall tape and simply just remove the drywall ahead of time. Then inspect the studs for any kind of electrical and use a sawzall to cut this one-piece fiberglass glass tub surround into three different wall pieces and then you can actually cut the tub in half to make the removal so much easier. Another common configuration in a bathroom is a one-piece stand-up shower. Again this is a fiberglass unit and you can just mark the flange that's going behind your drywall and then remove the escutcheon and the shower head just like you would with a tub. Then you can cut along that drywall with an oscillating tool and a sawzall so that you can expose the actual tub unit itself. Again this is a bulkhead head and you can keep the bulkhead by scoring the paper tape in the corners and just removing the drywall and the screws that are holding that unit to the framing. Then once again use a sawzall to cut this unit into four separate pieces. Three wall pieces will remain which you can easily remove by hand and then you'll also be left with the base. You can make relief cuts around the drain and that'll help you pull the base up off of the floor. Then you can cut the drain out using an oscillating tool and that makes it so much easier for the demo. Bathroom floors frequently have plank over top of your wood framing. You can make relief cuts around the perimeter using a sawzall and then using a long pry bar you can pull up on these planks. You'll also want to remove any of the nails or screws that are remaining in your framing. This makes it so much easier to inspect the joists and the plumbing and the electrical that's in the bathroom. Then you can apply liquid nails over top of the joist and add three quarter inch plywood and nail that down using a nailer or a screw gun and that way you'll have a solid foundation for your new shower that you're going to build. It's not uncommon for the wood subfloor to be unlevel where the shower used to be. So you can add 2x4s to that area and then seal the 2x4s to the wood subfloor using silicone. You'll definitely want to use a primer over top of the wood, the primer that matches your self leveler. Once you mix up the self leveler to the right consistency, you can pour that over top of the prime surface, agitate it, and allow that to dry. Then you can pull that framing and you'll have a nice flat surface for your new bathtub or shower. Your plywood or OSB edges might not be perfectly flush, so you can mix up a small batch of Ardex feather finish. Just make sure you mix it per the directions, and then dampen your wood subfloor and apply the feather finish over the uneven edges and smooth them out. And what's great is this will set up in about 20 to 30 minutes and allow you to waterproof your wood subfloor. Speaking of waterproofing, one of our favorite methods is to use Schluter Dietra. You want to dampen your wood subfloor and then use the appropriate trowel, in this case the Dietra trowel, and apply modified thin set over top of that wood subfloor, first burning it in and then using directional troweling and setting the Dietra over top of it and compressing it into the thin set with a float. That's really important. Then you can use a trowel to apply more thin set over any of the seams and add curdy band over top of that. This is going to waterproof the seams and make your floor 100% waterproof. Now, you can use Curdy Fix to bond Curdy Band to either a bathtub or a shower curb. You'll also want to apply thin set, either unmodified or a Schluter thin set, and then bond that Curdy Band to the tub or the curb for a full waterproof system. One method that you can use to waterproof shower walls is to add purple board and then dampen it with a sponge. Then you want to mix Schluter all set to a very thin consistency per the directions. Key that into the paper using the flat side of your trowel and then using directional troweling with more thin set. Then you can bond curdy membrane over top of that. This is a waterproofing membrane and this method is approved by Schluter. The most important part of this installation is to remove any of the wrinkles between the curdy membrane and the wall and also between the shower mixing valve. But again this is a great way to waterproof your shower walls. You also need to waterproof between the curdy membrane and your drywall or your plaster by using curdy band. The curdy band has to overlap the curdy membrane by two inches and also your drywall or plaster by two inches. But once again, this is a great way to make your shower walls 100% waterproof and ready for tile. Another method for waterproofing walls is with a curdy board. What we like about it is you can put it against your shower valve, poke a hole in the back, and then cut out the hole for the valve easily, either with a hole saw or a utility knife. Then you use screws and washers every 12 inches along the center of your studs. You can also add thin set mortar to a mud pan and apply that to the corners and the seams with a six inch drywall knife. Then you want to key that once more using the curdy trowel. This is really important. Then you 
can use one full length piece of curdy man along that seam to waterproof it. You can do the same methodology along the screws and the washers. This speeds up the installation quite a bit and also makes it more foolproof. Then you can add these mixing valve seals and pipe seals to the mixing valve area using the either Schluter All Set or an unmodified thin set. And what this does is prevent water from getting into the stud wall at those penetrations. But we highly recommend doing that so again you keep your shower walls 100% waterproof. Shower drain installation doesn't have to be hard. It can be easy with the curdy drain. You measure between the bottom of the flange and the shower pan. Remember that distance and mark it on an inside pipe cutter. What you can do then is add a handle to your hammer drill and you can just use the drill function to cut out that piece of pipe. Then you want to wipe down the surface with a damp sponge, add your thin set, bond your shower pan to it, and then use ABS cement in this case to bond the curdy drained to the pipe and also waterproof it with the curdy fleece. So again, this can be an easy installation. Don't let plumbing get in the way of you making your shower the way that you want. In this case, we had to cut out the vent and we had to reroute it using PVC pipe and make sure that it was properly sloped. Then we added more framing inside our wall, made sure that was level and at the right height for our shower niche because we're gonna be using 12 by 24s. You can add your framing in place, make sure it's nice and level. Then you can add your curdy board in this particular example again it's easy to install what you can do is you can cut out your area where that shower niche is going to go make sure it's centered on your wall and at the right height and you can fine tune your cuts with a simple utility knife that's why we like this prefab shower niche because it's so easy to install and it'll match up perfectly with our 12 by 24 tiles by the way if you're liking the tips in this video give it a thumbs up that way other people will find it and hopefully it'll help them with their projects another shower tray that's easy to install is the KB tile basin. You want to first bond your drain to the wood subfloor using polyurethane sealant, then apply modified thin set using a three quarter inch U-shaped notch trowel. Apply more sealant over top of the drain, then bond the tile basin to both the drain and the floor. It's a super easy installation and really is great for any type of DIYer who's never done this project before. If you do use the KBRS tile basin, we recommend taking a look at the go board. You can apply polyurethane sealant to the inside of the shower tray, then you can just simply cut this board with a utility knife and apply polyurethane sealant to all the screw holes and seams to fully waterproof it. But again, this is a very easy installation and great for beginners. Another awesome option if you've got a basement shower is to use the hard curb, especially if you need to customize it because you can cut it to any width and height. And in this case, we had to cut it down just a little bit so that it would be level. Then you can make it even with your shower pan area. You can mark the area, apply thin set over top of that. In this case, we use modified thin set, just Art XX5, applied thin set to the bottom of the curb, and polyurethane sealant to the go board that was used in the shower. Then you can set the curb, and it's super easy. Just make sure it's level, and you can use this with a mud pan or really any type of configuration in a basement shower or a second floor shower. If your tiles wobble a little bit, you can scribe cut them to fit the contour of your shower pan using an angle grinder and diamond blade. Back butter those tiles, put spacers between them in the shower pan, and continue to apply thin set to the wall using directional troweling. You need to also use a tile leveling system if you want to reduce tile lippage between these. Another tip is to make a cut, an L-notch cut, using your angle grinder and wet saws if you've got a shower bench. Always make sure that you've got an expansion joint between that tile and your bench before you move on with your tiling. Storage in a shower is always a little bit tough. You can actually add a floating metal shelf to the wall by cutting your tiles nice and straight on a wet saw. Then what you can do is bond a Schluter metal shelf to the wall using thin set mortar and the tiles go around the metal shelf flange. It's also very helpful to use a laser level when you do this but it's an awesome option if you want your shower to look nice and modern and you want an easy installation component. However if you want more storage space a shower niche is great. You can cut your tiles around the niche using your wet saw and that laser level that we mentioned earlier. This is really important. By using a laser level along the perimeter of the shower niche, you'll be able to keep these large tiles or even small tiles nice and even with one another and you'll have a great professional look in the end. If you like the tips in this video, make sure you hit that like button. And also, if you wanna see more of our videos, subscribe to our channel and we'd be more than happy to help you out.